Evening, everyone. It's uh, 5.37, and this is your closing comment for today, Wednesday, the 22nd. And it was uh, an interesting day. Um, the market was up. It was strong. It was up as high as, I guess, 5.26 or so. Managed to close up almost 3.40, which is two-thirds up on the range. Um, the NASDAQ, which was the only one up yesterday, was up another 150 or 1%. Now, that's a decent performance. Uh, the S&P up 41 and change, also right around 1%. Clearly the winner of the day was the Russell, which would figure since small businesses don't have the same kind of uh, access to money raising. And so interest rates really mean something to them. And, of course, the transports, which were the big loser and the only loser today, <clears throat> down under just under 70 or a half a percent. And that was pretty much on the um, FedEx numbers. So let's get to some of those numbers. Uh, FedEx was a miss. Adobe was a miss. Uh, FedEx closed down 23 or 9 percent. And I noticed something strange today, not strange, just something that I haven't seen or noticed in a while. And that is everybody knows about how I feel about people that I consider to be teleprompter readers. Um, and so I generally favor the people who are actually in the business and doing business. And what amazed me was... Stephanie Link talking about FedEx today in the middle of the day and kind of being an apologist for the stock going down. She did cop to the fact that she's wrong on it. Um, Karen Feinerman, who I adore and was on fast tonight, was also talking about FedEx and isn't ready to buy it just yet and is very disappointed in it uh, but uh, you know this is a company that gave up um, the Amazon business because they said they couldn't make a profit on it and I guess we'll see when UPS comes out with a statement how their competition is dealing with it so we'll know about that uh, adobe was more of a guidance issue it closed at 626.08 down 1981 or three percent fedex uh, pardon me facebook was a real debacle all day um, and they actually came out yet again the mark zuckerberg apologetic tour um, which seems to run from year into year into year. The stock closed 343.20 down 14.27 or 4%. And the discussion was really about how they were overstating advertising with the new Apple um, software uh, that makes it a little bit more difficult. And, you know, the everybody now is, again, apologizing for it, Mr. Zuckerberg and several of the teleprompter readers, talking about how cheap the stock is. And frankly, uh, you know, I don't get it. We own it. I'm not a seller of it. It tends to bounce back. But if it makes new highs again, I'd have to really take a look at maybe taking a little profit there. In earnings today, we had General Mills with a beat top and bottom. And a little bit of a warning. Uh, the stock had closed 58.01. It traded as high as 60.71. That may not seem like much to, you know, the apes or the other Robin Hood traders to see a $58 stock going to 61. But this is a huge company. And it closed at 59.92, up $1.91 or 3.3%. And that is substantial. Uh, Kaufman and Broad. KBH, missed on revenue, beat on earnings. So you can massage the numbers for earnings. You can't massage revenues. 
Uh, the stock had closed at 4091, traded as high as 4166, as low as 3823, and the last I have is 4075, and that's up 14 cents. So no real damage there. And BlackBerry, BB, um, a name that you know, ought to be a lot more aligned with cybersecurity since they have the best security software for a phone. The stock had closed 956, up 19 cents, traded as high as 1066. And the last I have is 1035, that's up 98 cents or 10% on smaller than expected losses. I think they lost six cents versus last quarter's seven cents or the year ago's seven cents. So um, two names that we discussed over the weekend in the Discord room, things that I was looking at that actually both of these run for the last two weeks. One is SoFi, which closed at 1691 today, up $1.74 or 11.5%, and was re recommended by Jefferies with a target price of 25. And that's 50% from where we closed today. So, pretty pleased about that. And RGC, which has a COVID joint venture with a company in Hong Kong, you know, I don't like the. Um, Chinese stocks don't trade them anymore at all. Uh, but RGC closed 24.50 up 8.05 or 49%. So a real nice move for that one. Uh, the Fed news was no news, really no big deal one way or the other. Um, and tomorrow we have it's Thursday. Thursday's claims day. So we have continuing and initial. We have leading economic indicators. We have PMI. And in the morning, we have earnings from Darden Restaurants, DRI. And then after the close, we have Nike and Costco. I think that we also have Rite Aid, but it's such a crappy little company. I don't even bother to bring it up. And Friday, we have uh, Carnival Cruise. So we'll see what that looks like. Okay. As far as the futures go, it was a very strange day in the metals in particular. Um, this is a chart of the platinum. Platinum traded uh, at the low the day before yesterday, 892. Was up 5160 yesterday. <clears throat> Closed up another 44.90 after trading over a thousand, a thousand and nine, uh, which was fifty-eight dollars up. So you have back to back pretty close to fifty-dollar days, and this one really performed. The silver performed again, um, and it was up twenty-five and change, and again looks pretty interesting. Um, didn't have the big dip that the gold did. Looks like it's real. Oh, sorry. Wrong chart. But I like the heating oil. <laughs> uh, silver up 29.60. Made a low day before yesterday. 22, just a shade over 22. Yesterday up 40. Today up another 30. Uh, traded 23.15, so uh, that would have put it above this little break uh, on the downside, this high. Uh, but again, higher, high, higher, low, both days off that bottom. What surprised me is the gold. And the gold was interesting from the standpoint of whenever I looked at it, it was up 10 and it was down 10. But basically, even though it had a slightly higher high and higher low yesterday and today, it closed basically unchanged and well under this area. Now, I showed you um, the silver that it was, uh, you know, above this uh, Friday high after the break. The gold is solidly above it, but again, Unchanged on the day, up 60 cents with platinum up uh, almost 50 and with silver up. And by the way, on the economic side, copper 
also had a nice recovery. So I'm a little bit surprised about the gold. Maybe we'll have a catch up day. I'm not sure. Uh, but the oil didn't have any trouble with the economic news. It closed 72.23 up $1.74, which is quite a substantial move. Uh, we had Bitcoin, which traded down to 40,000 last night, traded down there again this morning, traded all the way up to 44,000 and change. I'm going to give you a look at that chart uh, because it was, uh, again, another pretty extreme day, but it closed up over 1,300. So, um, you know, we seem to be holding this last major breakout right here at 40,000. We were there yesterday, lows yesterday, 40.85. Today, low 41.45. So slightly higher, high, higher, low. Closing on the top and not far from the break from uh, Monday when it was down 3,700. So uh, pretty decent looking chart. Uh, the dollar was up 26 cents. So that might have been a bit of a drain on the gold and the bonds after the Fed announcement or non-announcement were down a quarter. So not much going on there. All right, everyone. I'll be back first thing in the morning. Hope everyone had a good day.